Hi kindergarten, this afternoon I'm going to read you the story of Alexander the Great Dane. It is written by Chris Capstick and illustrated by Monica Filipina. In ancient, ancient Egypt, there was once a race of giant cats who ruled the land for as far as the eye could see. And cats can see very well indeed, especially giant ones. The giant cats favoured their smaller cousins over all the other animals. And cats being cats, they loved to lounge around all day, occasionally getting up to eat or play. This left the dogs to do all the work. They would cook all of the cats' food, make all of their fine clothes and even protect their lands. Some poor dogs even had to massage their giant paws. A young pup called Alexander grew up in the land of cats. When he was young, his life was all fun. He would play hide and seek, chasing and wrestling, or just dig holes all day long. But when Alexander got older, the giant cat sent him to work in the fields. He still got to dig all day long, but somehow it just wasn't as much fun. After a while, Alexander began to think that things weren't all that fair for the dogs. So he and his friends began to meet up in secret places and make plans to free all the dogs from the lazy giant cats. Why don't we just run away? The giant cats are too fast with their long legs. Alexander asked his friends what they should do. The cook said, let's feed them so much food that their bellies pop. Then we can escape. The next day, the dogs prepared a huge banquet, but the greedy cats gobbled everything up without much bother at all. Alexander asked his friends again. The tailor said, let's sew the lazy cats into their beds while they sleep. Then we can escape. That night, the dogs stitched them into their sheets, but the giant cats were far too strong and easily broke free. Alexander asked his friends once more. The soldier said, let's knock off their heads with giant catapults. Then we can escape. But cats are very sneaky. On overhearing the dog's plan, they built themselves huge sturdy hats to protect themselves. The dogs felt sad. Their plans had failed. They turned to Alexander and asked what he thought. I have an idea, but we must all work together, he said. First, we'll throw a huge party to say that we're sorry. Then we'll serve fine food, make fine clothes and even catapult confetti high into the air, all in honour of the giant cats. But we'll also do what all dogs are good at. We shall dig. So working together, the dogs dug cavernous holes beneath the giant cat city. When everything was ready, Alexander invited the cats to the party. Now everybody knows that cats love a good party, so they couldn't refuse Alexander's offer. But they didn't trust the dogs, so they wore their massive hats just in case. One after another, the giant cats arrived. As they gathered, the ground began to dip and crack, but it didn't break the, the through as Alexander had hoped. They're not heavy enough. What shall we do? Then Alexander had an idea. Let's play some music, he shouted. Cats love to dance. The giant cats began to dance. They jumped, they hopped and they twirled until with a mighty crack and a huge crash, the floor collapsed. All the giant cats tumbled into Alexander's trap, leaving only their enormous hats poking out. The dogs were free at last. Hooray for Alexander the Great Dane, they all cheered. Alexander and the rest of the dogs lived hot, long and happy lives, though they never did quite see eye to eye with the cats again. And the giant cats, they're still buried in the Egyptian desert, 
dancing beneath their rather distinctive giant hats. I really like that book because it reminds me of when I was in Egypt and I actually feel really sorry for the cats even though they were naughty because I remember how frightening it was. Those pyramids are very, very long tunnels to get down inside them. And I think the cats would have been scared. I found a video of the pyramids in Egypt. And if you would like to watch it, you can click on the link next to the book.